define the term free fall. So free fall is the motion of an object under the influence of gravity only, right? That is free fall. You start by saying the motion. If it was projectile, you would start by saying it is an object, so on and so on. That is the difference between free fall and projectile. Free fall is the motion of an object in which the only force acting is gravity, it's gravitational force. That is free fall. 3.1. Let's take a look at 3.2. We have to go through our equation statement. So a ball of mass 0.5 kg is thrown vertically upwards from the top edge of a building which is 15.3 meters high. The ball reaches a maximum height of 5.89 meters above the top of the building. The ball strikes the ground and bounces vertically upwards, reaching a maximum height at point P, as we can clearly see. Okay. 3.2. Using only equations of motions, calculate the speed at which the ball was projected upwards. So we will consider the motion of the object from the time it is projected until the maximum height. If we only consider that part of the motion, then VI is what we would be interested in. VF will be equals to 0 meters per second, maximum height. Our acceleration, if we take up as positive, it will be negative. So we're going to have minus 9.8 meters per second squared. Do we have delta T? We don't, but we have delta Y, which is equals to 5.89 meters that is the displacement of the object from the time it is projected until maximum height 5.89 not 5.89 plus 15.3 no but 5.89 we're only considering the part of the motion from the time it is projected until maximum height if we look at these equations and you want to find vi not these equations but if you look at these variables and you want to find vi the equation to use is vf squared is equals to vi squared plus 2a delta y okay vf that is zero squared being equals to vi vi is what we're interested in multiplied by plus 2 multiplied by a which is minus 9.8 delta y is 5.89 0 squared is just 0, obviously. If we take vi squared to the left-hand side, we're going to get minus vi squared being equals to. So now I have 2 multiplied by 9.8 minus 9.8 multiplied by 5.89. That is minus 115.444. If I divide both sides by minus 1, I'm going to have VI squared being equals to 115.344. Now I need to take square roots on both, both sides. If I do that, let me just go ahead and do that. I'm going to have 10.74 meters per second. Uh, I was looking for the magnitude or the velocity. Uh, let me take a look. The speed. Okay, speed. We only need the magnitude. So that is the speed at which the object is projected upwards, 3.2, 3.3, After the collision with the ground, the ball leaves the ground with a speed of 11.92 meters per second. Okay, let's hear the stories. The equation, calculate the amount of energy lost by the ball during the collision with the ground. That is for five marks. Let's make sense of that. We want to find the amount of energy, of kinetic energy lost by the ball during the collision with the ground. Okay. So as the ball strikes the ground, it is striking the ground with some EK, right? Because it has a velocity. Its velocity is not zero. And then as it leaves the ground, it is also leaving the ground with some EK. So we want to find how much kinetic energy the object loses, the ball loses when it is in contact with the ground. So we need to find EK as it strikes the ground. And we need to find EK as it leaves the ground. We need to find those two kinetic energies and find the difference between the two. The difference will be the kinetic energy 
that the object lost as it was in contact with the ground. So let's concentrate first on the kinetic energy as it strikes the ground. So we are looking at the kinetic energy as it strikes the ground. E is equals to EK, not just E, right? Because E can be inert. So EK is equals to a half mv squared. I need to write down this formula first before anything else. Now let's take a look. Do I have the velocity as the object strikes the ground? I don't. I only have the velocity as the object leaves the ground, but not as it strikes the ground. So I need to find the velocity as the object strikes the ground. Okay, let's go back to our sketch. Now we are considering the entire motion from the time it is projected until it strikes the ground. Okay, that is the motion we are considering now. Delta Y for that motion is minus 15.3. The displacement is downwards. Okay. A obviously will be minus 9.8 meters per second squared. If we take up this positive, that is. What else do we have? We have VI from the equation above. VI is 10.74 upwards. So that is positive. Okay. I want to find VF or the velocity as it strikes the ground. With these four variables, which, which equation can I use? Uh, is VF squared is equals to VF squared plus 2A delta Y going to work? Yeah, I think that can work. So let's go ahead and find the velocity at as it strikes the ground using that equation. V, VF squared is equals to VI squared plus 2A delta Y. Vf squared is what we interested in. Vf, not Vf squared, but you know what I mean. And then Vi, that is 10.74 squared plus 2 multiplied by A minus 9.8 multiplied by delta Y minus 15.3. So Vf squared is equals to, okay, let me just go ahead and put that in my calculator. Plus 2 multiplied by minus 9.8 multiplied by minus 15.3. I'm getting 415.2276. So VF is equals to. Now I just need to take square roots on both sides. If I do that, I'm getting 20 point. So I have 20.3771 meters per second downwards right this is downwards okay so now that i have this is the velocity as the object strikes the ground now that i have the velocity as the object strikes the ground i can go ahead and substitute it on ek so ek will be equals to a half m the m the mass of the object that is 0 0.5 so i'm gonna have 0 0.5 multiplied by the force not the force but the velocity what am i saying uh, the velocity is 20.3771 squared okay uh, this will be equals to so let me go ahead and put that in my concrete 0 0.5 multiplied by 20.3771 squared okay i'm getting 103.8 eight zero six six joules this is the kinetic energy as the object strikes the ground okay now let's look at the kinetic energy as it leaves the ground as it leaves the ground we're gonna have ek being equals to a half the mass is 0 0.5 the velocity as it leaves the ground it is given to us 11.5 92 so that's what we need to substitute 11.92 squared okay now i just need to put that in my calculator okay so 11.92 i'm getting 35 35.5216 joules so this is the kinetic energy of the object as it leaves the ground I want to find the amount of kinetic energy that is lost. So 
the amount of kinetic energy, so I can just say EK lost. EK loss. Uh, there is no formal way of writing this. EK loss will be EK that we started with as we are striking the ground. We have 103.8066 minus the kinetic energy as we are leaving the ground. Okay? So minus 35.5216. Is it 5216? Um, okay, I think that it, I think it is uh, 5216. Let me just go ahead and put that in my calculator. 1038361 minus um, 35.5216. I'm getting 68.31 joules as the amount of kinetic energy that is lost. So this kinetic energy is converted to heat, it's converted to sound and other form of energies, right? It is not disappearing. We know that it cannot disappear. It's just being converted from one form to another. That is 3.3.1. Quite an interesting question. It's the first time I see a question like this. Honestly, I've solved a lot of questions. It's the first time I, I'm seeing a question like this. But still... That doesn't mean you should get the question wrong because it's quite basic. You just needed to realize that, okay, I can find the kinetic energy as we strike the ground, uh, the kinetic energy as we leave the ground, and then the difference will be the kinetic energy lost in contact with the ground. Anyway, 3.3.2. Let's take a look. 3.3.2. Time taken for the ball to reach point P after leaving the ground. Okay. Uh, we leave the ground with a velocity of 11.92 meters per second upwards. And then at point P, that is our maximum height after striking the ground. So VF should be equals to zero. Acceleration minus 9.8. If we're taking up as positive, we're interested in delta T. So I think this is quite easy to compute. VF is equals to VI plus A delta T. VF is 0, VI is 11.92, plus the acceleration, minus 9.8, multiplied by delta T. So I have delta T being equals to minus 11.92, divided by minus 9.8. So, okay, let me uh, go ahead and put that in my calculator. So minus 11.92, divided by minus 9.8, 1.22. So delta T is equals to 1.22 seconds. That is 3.3.2. Yeah, let me just verify that point P is our maximum height. I don't want to miss anything. So yeah, point P, it is indeed our maximum height. Let's move to 3.4. 3.4 is a breath of fresh air, if I can say so. Yeah, I was not looking forward to having to sketch a graph. I, I was not looking forward to that. So now that I have a graph and I just have to identify the points, I'm quite a fan. I didn't want to sketch a graph. Uh, let me hear the stories, okay? Uh, the velocity time graph for the motion of the ball from the instant it is projected upwards from the top edge of the building until the time it reaches point P is shown below. Write down the numerical values indicated by each of the following. So 3.4.1 we have, let me just write that down. 3.4.1, we have K. So what is K? So let's take a look at L first. L is at T is equals to zero. So this is the velocity at which our object is projected upwards. We have the value of that. So let's just go ahead and write that first. So this is 10 point, no, 3.4.1, we're looking for K. In 3.4.2, we're looking for L. L is 10.74. That is the velocity at which the object is projected upwards. Okay. And then here we have V is equals to zero maximum height. We strike the ground at this velocity. And this is the velocity at which we leave the ground. So K is the velocity at which we leave the ground. It is given to us as 11.92. So the answer to 3.4.1 is 11.92. Okay. We are only interested on the numerical value. We don't have to put the... SI unit. Right. And then T2 minus T1. Let's take a look. So T2 is our total time 
the time at point P. And then let's take a look at T1. T1 is the time at which we are striking the ground. So T2 minus T1 should be the time from the ground to the maximum height, which is 1.22 seconds, like we calculated in the question above. Okay, this is quite not accurate. This is quite not accurate. I don't know if you're able to see why I'm saying that. This is the correct answer. It is the answer in the memo. I know that 100%. But it is not quite accurate. Think about it. If you get what I'm saying, if you can comprehend the idea, let me know in the comments. Let me know in the comments if you get it. What do I mean when I say this 1.22 is not quite accurate? Right, uh, that is question three. Let me know in the comment section which question you want me to do next.